that's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. This is Alan Sodden with Recipe <laughs> Corner, and today's guest cook is Chef Henri Fromage, who will tell us about a special dish for the holidays. What do you call it, Chef? I call this dish Fish Brains a la Chicago. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Andy Griffith. We have a special surprise coming along in a minute or two. And what I'm going to do, I'm going over there and I'm going to sit down beside the blonde lady in the green dress and I'm just going to listen along with the rest of you and have a generally good time. Because the author and star of the program, just now about to begin, is someone that gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to turn over the balance of this time period to Henry Morgan. Hello, anybody. Here's Morgan. Now, that's interesting. Some real live people applauded. Human beings. Maybe a bit later on, some real live people will laugh at something. And that'll be strange. It's been a long time since living people have laughed at anything. The laughter often comes from a tape. Now, this may be hard to believe, but the comedy shows on television, many of them, are written down on paper first. <laughs> Writers are paid a lot of money to think of what funny thing Laverne's going to say next. <laughs> then when the camera's pointed at her, she reads the line off a piece of cardboard. <laughs> this is followed by laughter. Now, on most TV programs, there's nobody there to do the laughing, even though the writer also wrote down laughter. So, they play a tape of people who once laughed sometime years ago. <laughs> We'll play a laugh tape and show you how it goes. Suppose the writer of the script wrote a line of dialogue, and after it he wrote, small laugh. They play a small laugh. <laughs> the next line the writer thought should have a bigger laugh, so they played that. <laughs> Maybe he wrote applause. <laughs> or applause and whistles. Or pandemonium. What bothers me is that these tapes were made so long ago that a lot of the people whose laughter is on them are dead. A lot of dead people are laughing at Welcome Back, Cotter. So we won't use tapes. If we do a line and nobody laughs, you'll know that that silence comes from real live people. Thank you. Right back after this. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Tonight... Here's Morgan. Henry Morgan, that is. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Little Buzz Kirk, nine years old, is brushing his teeth. His mommy's standing there watching him. When into the bathroom comes Grandma, a kindly, helpful woman. Grandma has an interesting suggestion to make. She says, Elfrida, with what is that boy brushing his teeth? With what? All right, what with? What with what? His teeth with, that's what. <laughs> his teeth with, that's what? Stop that. <laughs> Now, what kind of toothpaste is that kid using? Why, he's using flatter foam. The foaming toothpaste that flatters each and every tooth so that it will look its handsome best at all times. <laughs> what? Don't 
Don't you realize that he needs a paste with parasite in it? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Have you lost your marbles? What are you, some kind of crazy lady? You should be examined this minute. You're a dangerous lunatic. Hold it. Hold it right there, Mother. Just about what are you talking? About what? <laughs> all right, what about? What about what? Stop that. <laughs> What's all this about parasites? It kills hateful germs, that's what. <laughs> it gets all the rotten germs out of the kid's mouth and flushes them down the drain. <laughs> this enables the little chap to achieve good checkups. Well, I'm here to tell you that he gets excellent checkups as such. What do you mean, as such? All right, such as. <laughs> such as what? Stop that. And besides, this flatter foam junk has parasite in it. Well, why didn't you open your yap? In addition, Buzz Kirk here likes the taste. Don't you, kid? I love it. <laughs> really? He likes the taste? Why is that? It's got lots of sugar in it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to spend another hour with News Radio 22, your station for time, weather, news, traffic, and wonderful features 22 hours a day. Coming up in the next half hour, Kevin Kevin in the 22 helicopter, Roger Roger with Animal House, Arlene Arlene with Fashion Forecast, and Slanted, 22 different points of view, slanted by 22 different people. And now, one of those slants. My name is Knut Acne. <laughs> I've been wondering about the president's so-called energy program. As we all know, we are going to need more energy in 1985 or in 1990 or in 2000 or anyway pretty soon. And we all know that the more we spend for oil in foreign countries, the more money they have in dollars, and the more dollars they have, the less those dollars will buy. For some reason, if we kept those dollars here, they would buy more. The minute they get out of the country, they buy less. As a matter of fact, they buy less here, too, but that's for some other reason. <laughs> or maybe it's because if you have a dollar in Paris and they give you only two francs for it, and then when you have to buy it back, well, no, you wouldn't want to do that. Why would you be in Paris to buy dollars? <laughs> You'd have to have the francs first, naturally. Hmm. It would be a lot better if you bought the franc with Swiss money or maybe Japanese money. Well, in order to get Japanese money, you have to sell them something. And you can't sell them television sets. That's for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if we all sent back our Toyotas and our Datsuns, it would help. Tell them you got the wrong color or something. <laughs> anyway, that's my opinion. I'm Knut Acne. <laughs> the opinions expressed on Slanted aren't necessarily those of this station, this network, or this country. <laughs> Matter of fact, we don't listen. Well, it's 11.02 at News Radio 22. Time for the traffic report with Kevin Kevin. Come in, Kevin. Yeah, thank you, Leonard Leonard. We're now flying over Greater Metropolitan Downtown Elmersville. And although things are pretty good right now, there is a tie up over on 11th Street. And now, now wait a minute, there's something wrong. Yes, something's wrong. Oh, I've got it. That's not 11th Street. That's a. Uh... Well, now, there's the church. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. There's a little rift in the clouds now, and... Uh, oh, I see. This isn't Elmersville, folks. It's Colliston, East Colliston. That's what it is. <laughs> sure, you can tell by the bridge. <laughs> well, that's all from here. Now, back to the studio. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin will be back. Uh, wait a minute. Am I still on? Listen, I... Uh, Kevin will be back uh, no, with no, us. No, no, wait. I, I, I'm cutting you off, Kevin. Do you hear uh, me? Yes, I hear you, but you seem to be getting fainter. You're and... uh, going the wrong way, you dummy. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but as our regular listeners know, there's nothing we can do about the dummy. It's his chopper. <laughs> well, it's 11.14 at News Radio 22, and here with Recipe Corner is Alan Sodden. This is Alan Sodden with Recipe Corner, and today's guest cook is Chef Henri Fromage, who will tell us about a special dish for the holidays. 
What do you call it, chef? I call this dish fish brains a la Chicago. <laughs> Boy, sounds delicious. Fish brains a la Chicago. What do we do, chef? You take one number two can of fish brains, or you can get uh, frozen fish brains, two pounds, or you can use dried uh, fish brains, a pound and a half. Now, you take... Uh, the pardon fish... me, chef, but you haven't mentioned fresh fish brains. You wouldn't like it. <laughs> take the fish brains and soak in cold water. Meanwhile, uh, you chef, take the... how long do you soak? One week. <laughs> More or less. Meanwhile... Uh, pardon me, Chef. I hate to interrupt. You, but you haven't mentioned what kind of fish brains to use. Do you have any particular fish in mind? Oh, it makes no difference. All fish are stupid. <laughs> so, I say, uh, you take two potatoes, medium, or one potato, large, or half of one potato, very large. <laughs> or if you have a giant potato... You take one quarter. <laughs> now, of course, it is possible that you have a potato that is truly remarkable. A potato stupendous, gigantic. Chef. Chef, if you find one of those real terrors, what do you do? You take a photograph and send it to Guinness. <laughs> I see. Uh, but how about your recipe? You keep interrupting. Take the potatoes... And cut them into cubes. One eighth of an inch on each side. One eighth inch cubes, right. Some people get careless and cut the potatoes into sixteenth cubes. <laughs> or three sixteenths. <laughs> this is wrong. One eighth is two sixteenths. You do it the way I say. One eighth inch, right. You cut them up in one sixteenth or three sixteenths. You make a mess. You take the heart out of the dish... You make the whole thing fake. <laughs> Who do you think you are to make it your way? What do you think I come in here for and talk on this stupid microphone? You think I have nothing better to do? Don't bother me. Go, go out and eat fast food. <laughs> but this recipe is wasted on you. You don't know how to eat. You're a bunch of pigs. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Henri. <laughs> And tune in tomorrow when our guest cook will be a little kid. <laughs> and there you have it, friends. Alan Sodden's Recipe Corner. It's 1124 here at News Radio 22. And coming up, Roger Roger with Animal House. Uh, this is uh, Roger Roger with Animal House. Uh, today, as we do every once in a while, we play our little game of letting you listen to the sounds of various animals and birds to see if you can identify them. Uh, here they are. Let's see how well you did. The first sound... Now, that was, of course, the famous schleppen wolf. That's the dog that hangs around supermarket parking lots and begs for Twinkies. Next. That was the Baltimore Oreo, asking for more money this year. And next... The mosquito before <coughs> and after lunch. <laughs> Next. A woodpecker working on the plastic panels of a 1968 station wagon by mistake. <laughs> Next. A garter snake, recognizable by the snapping of his garter. <laughs> and next. <laughs> that was the well-known long-eared dog, the bugle. <laughs> okay, Copper, I sing, I sing. He done it. 
And he done it! There you have the typical stool pigeon. <laughs> well, that's all for today. This is Roger Archer. And that's all the time we have for News Radio 22. <laughs> Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Mother, 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 what are you giving your children for breakfast? Is it something with a lot of S-U-G-A-R in it? Are you giving the little darling sugar grains? Sweetie, sweetie, pumpkin eaties, candy coated rice happies, fudgies flakies, naughty, very, very naughty. Oh, mommy, you are a bad girl. Well, excuse me. Why, oh, I, I didn't see you standing there. Seriously, mom, do you realize that you are doing irreparable damage to your children's teeth? S-U-G-A-R makes big, jagged, gaping holes in them. Says who? Why, uh, more dentists say that. More dentists than what? <laughs> well, uh, more dentists than uh, others. Others what? Well, more dentists than don't say it. Uh, yes. Anyway, Mother, the thing for you to do is to switch to a breakfast cereal that is not sweet. Something that will be good for growing boys and girls, like roast toasties. Roast Toasties? Roast Toasties with the full, rich flavor of roast beef. <laughs> or try Golly Wafers. Golly Wafers have that wonderful, sharp taste of garlic. <laughs> garlic? Well, you know garlic, but it's for kids. Garlic. You want my kids to have garlic on their breath? Well, haven't you a little parsley? And then we have delicious, exciting pizza pasties. Pizza pasties have all the subtle aroma of pizza combined with hamburger. Hamburger? Plus tuna. <laughs> oh, that sounds awful. Well, not when you add milk or cream and some fresh fruit. <laughs> and then for your youngest child, we have Becca's Pudding. Becca's Pudding? For little kids? What does it taste like? The mud. Kids love it. Listen, Buster, to me, the whole thing tastes like mud and smells even worse. And then we have French fried tater tatters. Never mind. And we have bacon bite Oh, shut up. I've got my own special breakfast for my kids. What's that? I'm giving each of them a big bowl of sugar. If their little teeth get big holes in them and fall out, I'll send them to you. To me? You can string them together like a necklace and wear them in your nose, you turkey. Well, excuse me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to demonstrate the difference between old-time radio and the way things are today, or should be. To do this, we've asked the ready-for-prime-time players to pretend that they are actors in a mystery program on radio, say, 30 years ago. First, may we present the ready for primetime players. In order of their appearance, first, Elvia Allman as Lady Fonstock. <laughs> Next, Chef Mencken as Anatole the Butler. I bluffed you. <laughs> Henry Morgan as Inspector Woodlark. Halt, or else I shall feel obligated to discharge my pistol. <laughs> And Frank Nelson as Sergeant Dorn. Uh, Sergeant Dorn, mother. <laughs> and now, horror. Chills. <laughs> Nerve-wracking, spine-tingling, overpowering, mind-boggling, unloveliness. <laughs> but first, from inner sanctum, to set your teeth on edge, the creaking door. It's... 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 
<laughs> Midnight. <laughs> On a lonely, windswept English moor. In the cold, dismal castle known as Drummond's Folly, the electric power has failed. A storm is rising as Lady Fonstock speaks to her butler, Anatole. More candles, Anatole, more candles. Why, you've lit only three. That's all there's left, my lady. What you see is what you get. <laughs> Oh, oh. You spoke, my lady. Oh, oh, there at the window, a face. I don't see no face, my lady. But it was there. Oh, those eyes and those terrible pointy teeth. That wild black hair. Oh! The wind is blowing out the candles. Oh! Throw some champagne in her face. <laughs> ah, yes, there. I think she's coming round. Uh, but where am I? Right here, safe in your own wealthy castle, my lady. I am Inspector Woodlock, and this brave lad is Sergeant Dorn. How do, Mum? Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. That was all been so horrible. Well, you see, Mum, Farmer Atkins, who lives just yonder seeing that the power had failed, sent his boy, Jasper, to see if all was well with you. He arrived just in time to see your man here. Anatole, you call him? Yes, yes, Anatole. Why, Anatole, you're bleeding. Mind your round beeswax. <laughs> As I was saying, young Jasper saw this man making his getaway with the Fonstock jewels. Jasper promptly rode to town to notify us, and here we are. Anatole? Anatole? But that face at the window. One of Anatole's tricks, Mum. A painted balloon arranged to appear as soon as the wind broke the restraining cords. But, but the rock through the window. Ah, you see, Mum. The rock was thrown from the inside. Probably when your back was turned. But, but, and I've never told this to a living soul. Anatole is my, is my son. He would have inherited all of this after my, after... I mean, oh, Anatole, how could you? Shut your face. <laughs> Lady Fonstock, I'm afraid I have a bit of a shock for you. Anatole is not your son. Not my... No, ma'am, he's not. You could look it up. Why, blast <laughs> you. Yes, ma'am. Your son was exchanged in his cradle for a gypsy boy whom you know as Anatole. <laughs> your own true son is right here. Sergeant Dorn. <laughs> The rightful heir to the Fonstock jewels. That's me, Mum. A ma'am? A mom? A mother? Mother? <laughs> Throw some more champagne in her face. There ain't no more champagne. Well, what is there? I can chill some white wine, sir. Shut your face. Oh, oh dear, where am I? What happened? Oh, I remember. Wait. My son had a peculiar mark on the back of his left heel. Anatole, take off your left shoe. Halt, 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 or else I shall be obliged to discharge my pistol. No, Inspector, let him go. <laughs> Obviously, Anatole is a fraud. Obviously, your assistant, this Cree, I mean, uh, this splendid young man, is my own true son. What do you call yourself? It's Sergeant Dawn Mother. Yes. <laughs> well, I shall call my solicitor in the morning. You are now the heir to the Fonstock village. You're a very rich, very rich and powerful young man. And you may begin immediately. Ready, Mother. Good. First, clean up this mess. Then you may serve tea, Anatole. <laughs> Well, you may say so. That was old-style radio. We now present the same story you've just heard, but all new, all different, as up-to-date as the 7 o'clock news. We present Palumbo. Palumbo. 
Palumbo, the detective with the dirty but charming old raincoat, with the dirty but charming old dog, with the dirty old wife, but charming. <laughs> it's midnight in Beverly Hills, California. We're in the sumptuous mansion of Cher Fonstock, the multimillionaire disco star. A storm is rising as Cher speaks with her butler, Orlando. Hey, Orlando. The lights just went out. What's the matter? The lights just went out. Well, you voted for Proposition 13. I didn't. <laughs> well, Turkey, don't just stand there. Turn on the auxiliary. What's an auxiliary? I don't know. Maybe some kind of candle. We got any candles? What candles? Now, I'll go down to the cellar and look around. Ma'am. What are you calling me ma'am for? <laughs> I'm not calling you ma'am. You are supposed to... Oh, wait a minute. Somebody just came in the room with a flashlight. Uh, pardon me, ma'am. Well, that's more like oh, it. Yes, ma'am. Let me introduce myself. Lieutenant Palumbo, Los Angeles PD. PD? Police Department? No, private detective. <laughs> You're a cop? Sort of an auxiliary, auxiliary <laughs> ma'am. Well, what are you doing here? I just happened to be driving by, ma'am, and I uh, saw your lights go out. <laughs> by the way, I remembered about your uh, butler, Orlando. What about Orlando? Orlando's got a record as long as your leg, ma'am. <laughs> and Trittier. I <laughs> think he's a fraud. Orlando, a fraud? Why? Did you ever hear him sing? <laughs> just a minute, ma'am. I almost forgot. Just one more question. May I see your latest platinum record? Sure. It's right here. Why, it's gone. Yes, ma'am, and so is Orlando, and so is your collection of money, and so is the diamond you wear on your belly button. <laughs> Crime a necklace, so it is. <laughs> well, don't worry, ma'am. I left Sergeant Dorn outside as a backup. By now, Dorn has picked him up, and here they are now. Right, and here we are, miss. Orlando and Dorn. <laughs> Henry Morgan again, and friends. We are about to offer, for the first time anywhere, genuine voodoo celebrity dolls of people who have to be eliminated. <laughs> These are lifelike little figures made of cloth and stuffed with old rags. To use one of these genuine voodoo celebrity dolls, all you do is stick pins in it, read out loud the curse that comes with it in a handy package, and wait, just wait, you'll see. Yes, friends, while they last, these genuine voodoo celebrity dolls, complete with pins, handy curses, and complete directions for use, are available at one low, low price. They are merely six ninety-five each when bought in sets of 900 <laughs> We are now offering four of your old-time favorites. Lawrence Welk, Tony Orlando... Laverne and Shirley, and at no extra cost, Howard Cosell. <laughs> the genuine voodoo celebrity Howard Cosell doll is worth all the others put together. Just think, friends, right there in the privacy of your own home, you can stick pins in your Howard Cosell doll and read aloud the authentic curse. Then all you have to do is sit back and wait. But hurry, the supply is limited. Send your check for $28 plus $3 for gentle handling... Plus state tax, plus two dollars postage to Gribbonitz, Box Arnold, Tallahassee, Maine. I'll repeat that. Send your check for thirty-four dollars plus the pluses to Fanschreiber, Box Birdwing, Peoria, New Mexico. But hurry, we have bills too, you know. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, one of our most popular features, stars from the New Guinea Book of Records. <laughs> People from all over the world who have set new records in their chosen fields of endeavor, and those records have been immortalized in the New Guinea Book. We have spared every possible expense in bringing some of these wonderful people here this evening. First, please say hello to the man who holds the new record for playing a pinball machine, eight days, 11 hours, and 23 minutes, Mr. Al Plunge. Welcome, Mr. Plunge. Ah, uh, good evening, Mr. Morgan. Did I, uh, did I say your name right? Uh, P-L-U-N-G-E, Plunge? Plunge. That's where we say in my family, Plunge. I, I'm sorry. 
Well, Miss Pooge, I have to ask you something I've always wanted to ask somebody who does things that take a number of days. You were on your feet for hour after hour. Uh, didn't you ever have to, uh, have to, uh... Have to what? <laughs> well, you know, the call of nature. What call is that? <laughs> well, when you just can't, uh, you, you have to go to the... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how is that arranged? I mean, what do you do? Uh, I get somebody to uh, go for me. <laughs> you get somebody to go for him? Yeah, uh, I got a friend, he's my buddy, he'll do anything for me. <laughs> Mr. Plunge, there are certain things that one has to do for oneself. Like what? Are you some kind of moron or what? I don't know. Uh, are there different kinds? But, Plunge, don't you ever go to the bathroom? Yeah, sure. You want me to go now? No, I just... Uh, look, you were on your feet for over eight days. Didn't you ever sit down? Yeah, no. Uh, if you sit down, you see, uh, you can't give it the old body English... You gotta use the hips. You gotta wiggle the machine to get the ball into the hole. All right, all right, okay. Just one more question. What made you do it? Do what? <laughs> what made you stay on your feet for eight days, eleven hours, and twenty-three minutes? My wife. Your wife made you do it? I don't understand. You got a wife? Yes. Well, you know how they say, get out of here and do something? Well... For the purpose of this discussion, I'll say yes, although in point of actual fact, we, uh, that is my wife and I, we don't have interchanges of that nature. You married? <laughs> yes, I told you that. Uh, what was the uh, rest of what you said? Look, I'm afraid our time is up. I want to thank you very much. You're one of the greatest examples of vapidity we've ever had on our show. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Morgan. Time once again for our series of Little Journeys. Little Journeys to the Homes of Famous People. Today's Little Journey takes us to the home of Melvin Presby in Boondock, Alabama. Melvin Presby is no longer with us, of course. His guitar has become a harp. But millions of his fans come here to Boondock every year to honor the memory of the one who gave them joy. Now, there on the left, you can see the huge marble mansion Melvin built for himself, two marble swimming pools, one hot and one cold. The hot one was for his Japanese fans. And as we walk along the marble driveway, we come to the charming marble souvenir shop built by Melvin's manager. We're now going to open the marble door to the shop. <laughs> And here we find the manager, General Bayou. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. Y'all coming by a little remembrance? Well, uh, Here's a popular item. We sold thousands of these. Mm -hmm. Only eight dollars a piece. Doesn't look like much. Looks like a tiny piece of an old rag. Yes, sir, you got it. You sure have got a keen eye on you. <laughs> now, that there is a snippet. Mm -hmm. It's a genuine snippet. Of Melvin's very own wash rag. Eight dollars. You want it wrapped? But just a minute. Didn't you just tell me that you sold thousands of these? You couldn't get thousands out of just one wash rag? Melvin had hundreds of wash rags. The cleanest boy you ever saw took five, ten showers a day. 365 days a year. Hmm? Now, here's one. You see that little monogram MP in the corner? Melvin Presby? He used that one on the birthday of Robert E. Lee. Seventy-five dollars. Well, you see... <laughs> now, just step this way. Uh-huh. Now, over here, I have a genuine stuffed hound dog. A perfect, authentic copy of the original hound dog. Now, wait a minute. This is ridiculous. There never was this an original... This here is the only authentic hound dog. And right here, we have his leash, his little old food dish... His very own blanket and his Betty Bye. Betty Bye? Now look here. With his monogram on to it. You see? Right here in the corner says H.D. H.D.? Hound Dog. How can you stand... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah. Now, listen. Listen for a minute. 
I'm listening. I said listen. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Things is a little slow here today, so you can have hound dog. Now, that's normally $75. With all the fixings thrown in for just $118. Sir, I just don't want... Ah, you know, listen, you can have hound dog by himself for 60 or you can have the dish for 17 Or you can have the dish, the blanket, the betty buy, and the lease for 42 No, 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 no. I see. Well... You just take the dish for $11, and I will throw in a wash rag on me. No. No. I see. No. I see. No. I see. I'm saying you now, old buddy, you want to make me an offer for my little shop here. Son, that has got to cost you. Why, the sacred memories alone have been assessed at over $2 million. Now, hold it. Hold it. I didn't come in here to buy anything. You didn't what to not what? I just came here for an interview. Oh. You see, I represent Little Journeys. Uh. You see this pocket tape recorder here? Uh-huh. I was taping your remarks for that great radio audience. Well, I didn't know that. Well, now, that's a boy we will have a different color. Now, we have five kind of interviews. Oh, Plain, with no pencil or note, pad is $500. If you use a pencil, $600. If you ask personal questions... <laughs> Next week's show, we'll have an interesting group. We'll have Johnny Carson, Merv Griffin, Dinah Shore, Mike Douglas, Dick Cavett, and Sophia Loren. If not, we'll find somebody. Don't worry. This assumes that we'll be back, which we will, probably not next week, but one week. Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Here's Morgan was written by and starred Henry Morgan, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Andy Griffin. Members of the company were Alvia Allman, Bill Baldwin, Dawes Butler, Mary Jane Croft, Elliot Lewis, Shepard Menken, and Frank Nelson. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.